Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst of Storage Switzerland. As we talk to end users, they're looking at cloud backup, especially as we move up out of the sort of the consumer use case. And now we're thinking more about how do we use this in the data center and the, those data centers that are considering it are getting bigger and bigger. But one of the things that we almost always assume happens in that is you have to have an appliance or a hybrid cloud backup. Well, that might not always be the case. So to join me in this conversation is Chris Shen. He is the VP of products at Zeta. Uh, Chris, I know you guys have a different approach to mm -hmm. this. Why don't you talk us through it? Sure. So one of the core product principles of the Zeta Data Protect solution is that we set out to make sure that all of the solutions we put in place require no on-site appliance at the customer premise. No physical appliance, no virtual appliance, because we think it's a bit of an awkward or clumsy way to, to do backup, to require that in every case. First, it obviously introduces an additional cost factor to install them all, to manage them all, to run them all. Second, it also uh, uh, increases the complexity of the deployment. Um, picture, if you will, uh, a customer of ours who's got uh, some MSP customer that has about 140 end, end customers, yep. each one of which has one server. The last thing they want to do is double the server footprint at 140 right. different offices right. just to do well, that. Well, yeah, got complexity, cost, maintenance, things to worry exactly. about, There's all kinds of issues. Yeah. Next, upgrade. If you reach the capacity of your appliance, you need to either get a second appliance and put them together somehow or upgrade the appliance and restore rigidity. So what, I, what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, the, it's necessary to take the data from the primary to the appliance and from the appliance to the cloud on backup, but you have to go back through the appliance on restore as well. Right. If the appliance is what went out or if the office went out, you have to wait for a new appliance to get installed before you can do the restore. Right, sure. So all of this is great, the whole concept of no appliance, but you can only do it if you have um, uh, invested time and energy to WAN optimize your solution. Yeah, so WAN optimization, I think, would be a, a real key component here, right? Because that's what the appliance guys w will say, hey, that's why we did it, so we can yeah. optimize the WAN, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So WAN optimization is core to what we do here at, at Zeta. Um, and there's a reason for that. When I was uh, first entered the uh, uh, cloud backup for enterprises, online backup for enterprises market back in 2004, 5, 6 at time frame, the dirty little secret was all the existing enterprise online backup players were really land-based products that they had bolted the internet onto. Couple that with the fact that the typical customer they were selling into had a bonded T1 line at best, right. it just wasn't working, right? Right, sure. When, we came to, when I came to Zeta, we took a different approach. We spent maybe the first 18 months of our development cycle working on WAN optimizing our solution. So before before we even got around to backing up structured data sets and things like that, we had put a ton of IP and, and, uh, and intellectual property and, and patents into making a solution that really turns the internet into a data conduit that can protect large data sets. If you think about server images, for example, they get large enough, multi terabytes large, that without WAN optimization, you really can't back them up unless you have an appliance. Right. So you need this to have this. Well, without giving away the secret sauce, give me some like high level things of what you did to optimize that, that sure. connection. So there are a, a, a ton of different sort of familiar concepts that we deployed in a new, sort of unique new way. Okay. Um, uh, they go to things like massive amounts of parallelism over the internet, uh, a lot of localized change detection, aggressive change detection so that we minimize on resync. We do things with dynamic TCP optimizations depending on t uh, TCP IP window size optimizations depending on the type of data set we're seeing and so on and so forth. And then every solution we've built on top of that, we've had to be innovative about the way we approached that particular problem, whether it was a SQL database or in this case in our most recent release, Windows Server Image Backup where you might have a two terabyte drive but only 50 gigs is used. Well, you right. don't want to send two terabytes over the internet. So you have sure. to be clever about things whenever you're track a new problem. Okay, all right, that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, the server image capability and what sure. that brings. Okay, well, it's important to start by noticing that we did everything using standard Windows technology. So the Windows, the server image backup that we're releasing right now is a Windows-centric solution. So this is not tied to VMware, this is not tied to Hyper-V, this is not tied to Zen or a physical box. It's a Windows solution. Regardless of what platform you're deploying on, we use Windows technologies to snapshot the server, we use Windows technologies to back up the server, and then once it gets stored with us, we store it in standard Windows VHD and VHDX um, 
formats. And the reason for that is it makes the restore very simple. Right, With a oh, VHD, sure. you can mount it and read it. You can boot it into Hyper-V. You can convert it to v VMDK and put it in a Hyper-V form. Or you can use standard recovery technologies and burn it back onto a physical box and be off and running. This is a, sort of the key to the solution. Makes well, that, everything and, and that kind of increases that you know, we were talking about rigidity before. Yeah. This is obviously very flexible. Very right? flexible restore. You can go from virtual back to virtual, from virtual to physical, from physical to virtual. All those different things can be accommodated by using these standard technologies. And my sense would be that you would also be more immune to you know incremental upgrades that, that Microsoft might put right. out to Windows, right? Right, exactly. Because exactly. you're kind of following the rules. We're so. following the rules, right. Nothing we're doing. This is very different from the old school BMR approach, which was proprietary, process intensive. It never worked because something was wrong with the hardware, et cetera. If you just stay within the world of Windows and follow their path, the, the world gets a lot simpler. And, and so with this capability, kind of walk me through how that process works. If I, I'm a guy and I want to do Windows Server image backups, how, how do yeah. I take, how to make well, that happen? Well, let me, let me take a step back and actually just sort of describe the full capabilities of what we've got today. Our, okay. our primary footprint on the customer side is called Zetamir. Okay. So this works off of both physical and virtual um, servers. It works off of Linux, Mac, and Windows. Now, I've talked a lot about Windows today because it turns out that about 90% of our customer systems are Windows. And then we started out with backing up files. Then we went to structured data sets like um, databases or system state files and things like that. Then we mm -hmm. did NAS boxes on the network. And now we're doing full server images. Um, and the other thing to remember is that it backs up both to the cloud but you can also store backups locally on any place you have excess disk. So that's to, to clarify, though, that's because that's important. That's not necessarily an appliance. That's no. an extra disk that you yeah. have. Some people just plug a USB drive in, or they have a centralized NAS share that has extra space. Whatever they want to use, we'll put the backup there, and they can restore it from there. A tape, okay. even, if you wanted to put it on tape. Okay. So it's really kind of a full solution for a mid-market customer who has these various technologies deployed throughout it, regardless of what vertical they happen to be a part of. So what are some of the structured uh, databases you the predict? The standard ones you'd think of, we do SQL databases, we do Exchange databases, obviously we do like system state files on Windows machines and things like that. And we're starting to get asked for other things like MySQL and things like that that we're starting to, to work into the to solution work into as well. Yeah, and as I recall, you guys have moved pretty quickly through getting those yeah. supported. Yeah, well again, from here on down, well actually here, here, and here, if you just do what Windows has already built into the operating system, you can back it up and restore it pretty quickly. The secret sauce for Zeta is really in the WAN optimizing, taking these technologies, detecting what's changed, and sending those changes off to the cloud as efficiently as possible so that we always have the most recent state of your data as well as all the versions. And, and so then finally, just wrap me up with the, because I'm really interested in this server image thing. So once I have that there, if I'm a guy and I'm using your whole set and I have a server down, what's that look like sure. for me? Well, so first of all, People that have been using this, because we've had this out in market since about March in, in beta form, they're making decisions about how to best back up their data so that it's most easily restored. Right. If you're backing up a file share, you probably wouldn't take a full server image. Right, sure. You could extract a file out of a server image, but you'd probably just point it at the file. Similar if you've got a shared database server, et cetera. But there are certain server images where it makes sense to get the entire, a consistent state of the whole box, like mm -hmm. a domain controller, for sure. example. Um, what they would do is they could either restore it back using, again, our WAN-optimized technologies into their environment and spin it back up, or they could use any of a number of public clouds and port it over there and spin up on a rented box somewhere in a virtual image. Because it's a Windows machine that doesn't care what it's running on, right. it's pretty easy to, to, to deploy it. Yeah, so from a flexibility standpoint, again, if you have a disaster, be able to put it out in somebody else's public cloud and, yeah. and bring it up. It's exactly. a huge exactly. exactly. Chris, anything else? The only other thing I'd like to mention is sort of outside the scope of the image stuff or any of the rest of what I've talked about, it has to do with another layer of security that we've added in 4.5, and that is just two-factor security. So our data center infrastructure has always been very highly locked down, multiple tests, all kinds of audits, everything you'd expect. But our web portal, where our customers access their data, their backups, their, their monitoring and management information, all that stuff, that was always a username password accessed website. Mm -hmm. Now we've added another layer of authentication using Google Authenticator. So you, lo you put in your username and password, you're prompted for a six digit code, log into your iPhone or your Android phone, click on the Authenticator app. Every 60 seconds there's a new code, you type it in, then you get access into the environment. So with all we've been reading about this rash of compromised credentials, we decided to add a two factor uh, with four or five. That's a good system. idea because I think that's a, that's a big issue that kind of gets people worried about the cloud is what's my security exactly. going to look like. So that exactly. takes care of that. Exactly. Hey Chris, thanks for joining us Thank today. you George. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.